So, hey guys, welcome to my review of um, Aquaman issue number 8. Now, before I get into this review, I'm going to tell you the comic books that I picked up today. I picked up Aquaman issue number 8, of course. I also picked up Teen Titans issue number 8. The Flash issue number 8, which I will not be reviewing if you guys are going to ask me that. I will not review it because I still haven't talked about the whole entire series as a whole. So... You know, I would like to do that for you guys, but right now I'm really busy and I got, you know, the comics a bit late, you know, in the game when the new 52 came out. So I'm really behind on, you know, the Flash comics or doing a review for the Flash comics. Um, but if you guys want my impressions or my opinion on it, I really do enjoy the Flash comics that are going on right now. The storyline is great. Also, um, I love the introduction for um, Captain Cold. Uh, one of the Flash's main villains in his story is Captain Cold. And I love his introduction to the, you know, the Flash comics right now and it's really amazing really great i loved every single issue that has came out so far for the flash um and yeah if you guys have not checked out the flash comic yet you guys should check it out it's really great it's really um it's really amazing and i love the art in the series because it's the same art that's in the what the flashpoint comics or the flashpoint prelude comics um or the road it's called the road to the flashpoint um but it's not called prelude to the Flashpoint, but it's, you know, um, the road to Flashpoint. Um, it's the same artist that did that artwork for that comic book series, and it was really great. Um, and I also picked up Avengers vs. X-Men, um, which is, this is a whole different, you know, Avengers vs. X-Men comic. I'll just show you right here, um, just to make a difference um, between, you know, the issues. This is Avengers vs. X-Men. Um, now, this one right here is just a versus comic, where it's just all action. Um, it's, you know you know, canyon to the, you know, storyline that's going on right now, but it, all it has to deal with is just the fight scenes. Like, in the last issue of Avengers vs. X-Men, you saw Magneto vs. Iron Man, and you want to see how that fight goes? You can pick this issue up and actually see the whole fight between Iron Man and Magneto and see who wins. Same goes with The Thing and Namor. Who do you want to see win? It's in this issue. They will have at least two fights per issue, and it's only six issues long. It's... I haven't read it yet, but I'm interested because it's all just all action. There's like barely any dialogue, maybe a few dialogue between the characters fighting, but it's all out action, you know? It's not like story, story, story. It's just gonna be fight, 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 you know, versus. So I'm very excited to check this out. So if you guys are, don't want to read the Avengers vs. X-Men series and you just want to see um, the Avengers vs. X-Men just duke it out um, one versus one, then pick up this issue if you guys want to. Now... Now that I'm done rambling on and you guys are already waiting for me to do my review or my opinion on Aquaman issue number 8, well here it is. So in the last issue of Aquaman, um, we had a really, really great, awesome introduction to Black Manta, a really badass intro to Black Manta. He, it was just a really awesome introduction and I really loved that about that issue. Um, but what also happened in that issue was that we were introduced to this this whole group right here, um, as you can see here, there's this group of people that actually worked with Aquaman before. Um, now, one of them is actually missing. Um, she was a Sheer, and I think her name was Kiana or Kayana. Um, yeah, it's, I can't pronounce her name, and I apologize for that. But she died by the Black Manta's hand um, in the last issue. But we were introduced to these whole group of people that have these strange Atlantic... Um, relics, you know, they possess uh, Atlantic relic, each and every one of these members, so it was really interesting and there's this mysterious behind these relics and Black Manta is trying to gather them um, also um, before, you know um, we were introduced to these characters um, Aquaman and Mira were actually going to Dr. Shin to you know, have him analyze that um, Atlantis beacon um, calling for help, you know, seeing if he can decode everything and figure out what's going on. Um, and then he was attacked by one of the members here. Um, her name is Yoara. Um, it's actually mentioned in um, the comic uh, in this issue. And she has a Black Panther and she wants to kill, you know, Professor Shin or Dr. Shin because she thinks that he's working for uh, Black Manta. And basically in the end of the issue, you see this picture with the whole entire group together. Now the open of this, opening of this issue is really fantastic. I really liked it. Um, now we open up with a whole bunch of, you know, news reporters, right? There, there's a lot of them. It's like a mob of them, you know, in front of, you know, Arthur's house or Aquaman's house. And we just learned that Aquaman's father just died. And they're banging at his door, asking him questions like, is Atlantis real? Can you really breathe underwater? Who are you? Give us information on, you know, Atlantis. And 
you know, he wants to be alone. His father just died. And you can see the tears coming out of his eyes. And he gets really frustrated and upset. And later on, he just kicks the door open. And everybody was all like, you know, everybody's shocked. And, you know, he asked, they asked him, like, oh, we just want to know who you are. We just want the truth. We want proof that Atlantis is real. We want to know who you really are as a person. And Aquaman says, you know, finally I have learned that I'm not one of you. And he rips off his shirt, jumps off the cliff of his house, and into the ocean, escaping those mob, not mob of news reporters. And then we see Professor Shin um, shoving people aside, trying to get into, um, you know, get out of the crowd. And he wants to stop Aquaman from leaving. But then before he leaves, you know, he feels bad and he says, Arthur, I'm sorry. So I wonder, I wonder what's going on between here. We know that he's been prying you know, Aquaman for the truth of Atlantis, and maybe he leaked these information to the news reporters and they've been bugging him, um, but we don't really know what's going on. Um, so we don't know why Professor Shin feels bad in the first place. Um, maybe because of the reason why I just said. Um, but after that, uh, we open back up with what's going on in the last issue. We see Yawara and Aquaman Mira and, you know, Professor Shin in this, you know, in his house. Um, and basically, um, Yawara still, you know, accuses um, Professor Shin for working with Black, Ma uh, Black Manta. And, you know, it's his fault that um, the Shear died or Kiana died. And uh, basically, it's his fault that now Black Manta is going after everybody else. And Amira asks her, okay, who are these people? These group of people, who are they? Are they Atl Atlantean? And he, um, Yawara or Aquaman says that, no, they're not Atlantean. They're either human or superhuman. And they just possessed a Atlantean relic, which is pretty interesting. Now, this is really, really interesting right here. I really like that aspect of this. Um, but yeah, after that, um, you know, after all the, you know, um, Yuara is accusing, you know, Professor Shin for working with Black Manta, you know, Aquaman gives him the benefit of the doubt and he still wants his help. So he says, you know, why don't you stay here and Mira, why don't you protect him? And me and Yuara will go and find um, the Shear's body. And, you know, see how, you know, Black Manta killed her. And I want to see it. You know, I want to see the body that she's dead. Um, so they leave. And, you know, Mira supposed to, you know, protect um, Professor Shin. But she has her own intentions here. She asks Professor Shin, tell me everything you know about this group of people. And tell me, you know, what's going on with the, you know, Atlantean relic. What's going on here, you know? And basically, we sort of get a bit of a backstory. Um, six years ago, we see, you know, Aquaman and this group of people. Um, basically, they're trying to apprehend Black Manta for some apparent reason. And um, uh, what happens is they're actually in Siberia. Um, I think it's Siberia, and you know they're in you're, they're on a mountain and it's snowing, um, and they're trying to apprehend Black Manta. But what happens is uh, Black Manta sort of you know causes an explosion, and there's going to be an avalanche, uh, avalanche that's coming down, and it's going to hit a nearby village. So Aquaman says, "Ignore those human beings. We don't need their help. Okay, we don't need to help them. We we need to apprehend Black Manta. This is the only time we can get to him, and we're going to get to him now. But everybody else, you know, they're humans. Like I said, like." You know, they said they're either human or superhuman, and they don't want to have these innocent people die. So all of them flew back or ran back to the village to help protect these people. And we actually see uh, one of these people actually use their relics. His name's Prisoner, and basically he has these um, gauntlets with a chain on it, so you can say it's like a handcuff. And basically he creates this kind of aura that protects people. It's like a sort of shield. And basically we see him use his um, Atlantean relic there. After that, they save everybody from the village. And Aquaman actually saves a little girl um, that's about to actually get hit by the avalanche. He saves her just in time, um, meaning that he didn't actually go try to apprehend uh, Black Manta. He actually tried to go back and actually help the village. Um, and then afterwards, we, we see, uh, you know, uh, Aquaman and Yoara, you know, observing, um, you know, the Shear's dead body, and they just talk about Black Manta's trying to gather all of the relics, and of course, Yawara is still, you know, accusing um, Professor Shin, you know, he's still working with Black Manta. If it wasn't for him, he wouldn't even know our locations, and Aquaman says, we need to help everybody. We need to warn everybody in our group that, you know, we used to be with, and we need to, you know, warn them. We need to help them, because I owe them everything. I even owe you my life, Yawara. You really helped me a lot. Um... And basically, in the end of this issue, we see Black Manta actually finds one of the uh, one of these 
you know, people. He actually finds prisoner. Um, and that's how the comic book ends. Now, um, this comic was really great. It started off really, really nice. I really liked um, the concept of, you know, giving more backstory for Aquaman. I mean, we know a lot of people, you know, make fun of Aquaman. But at the same time, we know his... His story is, you know, his story is pretty sad. He's hated by his, you know, people. Every Atlantean hates him. You know, the whole entire people in Atlantis hates him, you know, because he's half human and half Atlantean and they don't accept that. And also um, the fact that humans can't even accept him or they even bug him. And the only person that he really truly loved and the person that ever treated him normal was his father. And to open up with that six years event with his father's death and Aquaman feeling really sad about that is a really big turning point, a really big breaking point in, you know, bidding, building up, you know, Aquaman's character. Why is Aquaman the way he is right now? You know, it's probably because of these people, because of Professor Shin, because of his father's death and all this backstory for Aquaman. I really love it. I felt really sentimental for him, you know? All these people just bugging him and his, the tears in his eyes. He just wants to be left alone. Leave this man alone. His father just died. Come on. Even, even if it's not his biological father, leave him the F alone, man. And I felt really bad for Aquaman. And I felt it was a really, really strong feeling there for me, you know, in a way. Um, and then also, um, the backstory for these characters is really interesting because of the way he treated the human beings, that he wanted to apprehend Black Manta for some apparent reason. We still don't know why uh, Black Manta and, you know, Aquaman has, you know, a, you know beef with one, on, one, of, uh, one another. But probably we will get that backstory later on. But it is interesting that to see how he actually sacrificed the human being's life just to apprehend Black Manta instead. Because Black Manta is actually human. Now... Why I say that he sacrificed a human's life, and the reason why is because he doesn't really like human beings afterwards. Um, and I guess what he means when he says, I thank all of you guys for teaching me, for I owe you my life or something like that. Because like I said, these people are actually superhuman or human beings. And being that it is, Aquaman really didn't like human beings because of their you know, annoyance, and they never accepted him, always making fun of him. Um, but I guess I think this group impacted him. Maybe later on, maybe I'm just I'm just guessing that maybe this group actually impacted him in his development for actually accepting humankind. Um, because I think after you know that event with his father's death, it really was a breaking point where he has to leave these human beings because he has had enough of them. He hates them now, or he resents them for some apparent reason, right? Um, and I think this group actually helps him, you know, have a epiphany or you know accept human beings and i think that's really great um that's my you know opinion my thoughts on how you know things are going this is my elaboration on what's going on in the comic you can have your own ideas but this is my idea thus far and that's why i think this comic book was really great this issue was really great is because you can elaborate and understand what's going through aquaman's you know mind and throughout his life and how he became Aquaman and how he became the man he is to this day. And I still want to see all these strange, um, you know, Atlantean relics because I love mythology and it's great. I want to see every single one of them, see what kind of powers they can do. We see, you know, prisoner use his ability to use his aura shield kind of thing. And that's really interesting. Now, I suggest you guys keep picking up this issue. It's getting really great right now. Um, the storyline is moving along really, you know, well. And I'm very, very, you know, excited. And I'm very, you know, I'm just anticipating for the next issue to come out and see what new backstory they can give us or what new information they're going to give us. Because right now, it's there's a lot of questions, but it's really interesting questions. And some of them actually are answered, you know. And, you yeah, I'm very excited. Very excited to see the rest of, you know, the storyline go along. So highly suggest you guys pick this issue up. It's really great, really fantastic. And I'll see you guys later.